Wow to YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse, Merry Chris Mahanika Kwanzaa. I think that covers it all. Yeah, it's the month of December. Time for a silly hat change, and don't worry, I've got plenty of others to enthrall you with. Uh, today we're going to work on the Synology. I got a little bit of a problem as I moved stuff around on my rack, as you saw in my rack changes video for 2020. I moved a bunch of stuff around, and I wanted to put my uh, Active Directory domain controller on a machine that very seldom, if ever, gets rebooted. That way I don't have to, you know, have the chicken and egg syndrome when you uh, sometimes load an Active Directory server under Hyper-V. The problem comes in, it, it, the problem with that Synology NAS, I should say, is it only has 4 gig of RAM. And it's really not enough to run the base operating system of Synology, managing all those drives and running snapshotting and replication and deduplication and that kind of thing. It just doesn't have enough RAM to give over to the Active Directory machine. And I've had all kinds of crazy stuff happen. As you'll see in the video, I talk about that some. So today we're going to upgrade that Synology NAS from 4 gig to 8 gig. So come on, let's get on to the video right now. So there's something I need to share with you. We're over my uh, DS918 Plus, my disk station from Synology. Still love my Synology disk station. Uh, if you can afford it, buy a Synology. You won't be disappointed. Uh, there's a, just a plethora of stuff you can do with Synology. But seeing as this NAS stays up 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, I decided to go ahead and virtualize my domain controller and put it onto my Synology NAS. That way, you know, it's always up and running. I don't have to worry about it. My domain controller is not something I play around with in my lab. I need it for specific reasons. But, as you can see right here, we have a slight little problem. Uh, I've only got 4 gig of RAM in this NAS. In fact, if I bring you up to the control panel and go over to Info Center, you'll see I only have uh, 4 gig of RAM. And that just ain't cutting it. Uh, right now, the uh, virtual machine is running the uh, Windows Server 2019. So you can see right here, MCSDC01. But I've only been able to give it uh, 2 gig of RAM. And I want to be able to give it 4. Uh, and I need to have enough RAM left over to power the Synology disk station. So... What I'm going to do today is I'm going to bring my domain controller down and I'm going to bring my Synology NAS down and we're going to go over to the workbench and we're going to add another 4 gig stick of RAM. Should be fine. So we're going to bump this up to 8 gig of RAM and then we're going to give this virtual machine more memory. Here's uh, there's my NAS. It's now powered down. So what I'm going to do, disconnect it, get it over on the bench and... Uh, We'll see what happens with it next. Uh, what we want to do is take all the drives out first and we need to keep them in order. Okay, so we get it apart. Well, we get the drives out. Now what I could do is that RAM module goes in right here. So, without tearing this thing all apart, I'm going to attempt to, uh, yeah, I'm going to attempt to go ahead and put the RAM in and just see if it works. Right now it's got a Synology 4 gig RAM stick. I got another 4 gig. So, what we have here is this ATEC. I don't know if you can see it. It's an ATEC RAM module off of Amazon right there it is a DDR PC3 14900 so dim so I got the RAM out alright so it is it is a 4 gig DDR3 PC3 14900 so dim and it is a 1.35 volt so dim so 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this thing on its side here. So you can see what I'm doing. And uh, it's going to go in right here. So we'll just flip the dim. Hopefully I can get this thing inside and mounted. And it appears I have. So that was trivial, but some people will have you take the whole case off here. Um, as you can see, we didn't need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just verify that dim is in there. Uh, the Synology is getting a little dirty. It's got some dust bunnies in it, but uh, we're going to clean it out at the end of the year. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and pop my hard drives back in. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little dust off, and then we're going to put it back in the rack, fire it back up, and hopefully it will boot with that new RAM in there, and then we can get our uh, virtual domain controller back up and running. Alright, so we'll see, ya. we'll see you back at the workstation. Alright, so the deed is done. So let's go to control panel and info center and we see we now have eight gigabytes of RAM in the MCS NAS. So now the next thing to do is to see if we can edit our virtual machine. And I want to give this machine plenty of RAM. So I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to change it from two to four gigabytes of RAM. I'm only going to give it two CPUs. That should be fine. We'll click on OK. And now let's go ahead and uh, let's power on the NAT. Or I'm sorry, let's power on our domain controller. Uh, CPU cores are set at two. RAM is set at four. Legacy BIOS. Alright, let's power it on. See if we get some successfulness here. Now, uh, normally what'll happen is I'll know I can I'll know what's up and running when I see an IP here. Sometimes I don't, um, and it was very sketchy with only two gig of RAM getting this, <laughs> getting Windows Server 2019 installed on the Synology is not something I would recommend you undertake, unless perhaps you have SSD drives in here because it was not a pleasant experience. I was constantly thinking that the machine was locking up and I was having all kinds of issues. So I did get it installed, but if you're going to do a server 2019 to set up as a domain controller, be prepared to, uh, uh, that it's going to take some time. I think it took me four or five hours to get the whole thing set up. And most of that time was spent waiting on the install, you know, or the hard drive activity to come down to a level to where it could, you know, actually do something. All right, so now we're logging on uh, to the uh, domain controller through a remote desktop session. And we'll see if it feels any quicker than it did before. I'm not expecting miracles because this is on spinning rust. But uh, this will give you an idea of the speed of the system. Uh, and keep in mind, I'm running Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I'm running on this server. I just, you know, I have a need for Active Directory, real Active Directory. Now it says I need some updates, so probably while I've got this thing, uh, while I'm playing with it, I'll go ahead and do updates. But I want to want to bring up Task Manager. It seems a little faster than it was when I installed it, so... It's not really using a lot of RAM, but I like to give my server, especially my Active Directory, about 4 gig of RAM. And you can see the processors. It's not too bad. What usually eats up processes is the, uh, is the acti disk activity. Uh, but it looks like it's working well. I want to make sure... Let's bring up Server Manager, because that'll really, that'll really tell me if it's... Uh, if it's utilizing that RAM a little bit better. Server Manager is a pig. Just look at the CPU usage when you bring it up. That's why I prefer to use Windows Admin Center, but when I'm doing my initial configuration, I like to make sure 
everything is going on through here. Uh, everything is correct on here. All right, so it appears it is working just fine now. Uh, the CPU usage has stabilized. Memory usage has come down a bit, but I like having that reserve of memory there if I need it. I can tell already the virtual machine is much quicker than it was. Now, uh, of course, Windows is telling me I need some updates, so I'm going to go out and uh, I'm going to see if there are updates out there. I have not activated this copy of Windows yet either, but I will. So let's go out and see if there are updates. Yep, Windows and uh, antivirus, intelligence update for antivirus. Check one more time. See if there's any more updates. And then I'm going to log off and uh, then I'm going to reboot my workstation and make sure I can log into the domain and make sure all is well. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have gone to 16 gig on this uh, Synology, but I, I just don't have a need for it. You know, I think 8 gig is good for what I'm doing. <clears throat> and this way I can play around with my uh, virtual machines, with my servers and not have to worry about a domain controller being interrupted uh, or having to move a domain controller around a virtual domain controller. Uh, I will eventually have a backup domain controller as well, but right now I'm just, uh, my uh, lab and, and my uh, corporate network are just kind of in a state of flux as I experiment with stuff, so. And that's the beauty of having a lab. Okay, so it looks like uh, all the updates are good. And uh, we're done with this bad boy. So, uh, lesson learned. If you're going to put a Windows Server 2019 virtual machine on your Synology NAS, the more RAM, the better. Um, it just uh, it seems speedier. And now I've got more RAM left over for, uh, to run other applications on the Synology NAS as well. Well, there you go, YouTube. Success. We successfully got it done, and we didn't have to rip the entire NAS apart. So, um, yeah. Uh, some videos show you've taken that whole cover off the NAS. I don't see where that's necessary to install RAM. Now that NAS does need a good cleaning, but we've got that scheduled for the month of January. And I want to do an actual video on how to how I clean my rack. Uh, and I do it about every 90 days. But anyway, I digress. That should do it for this video. We hope you found it entertaining and informative. As always, please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked it. Leave your comments in the comments section. If you're so inclined, we take PayPal and Patreon for donations. And we're gearing up to get that Dell R720 server, so all donations are going to that right now. And as soon as we get the money saved, we'll, we'll pull the trigger and get one of those in. And a shout out to all my subs and all my loyal fans. <laughs> you folks have been great over the years. We're going we're gonna to keep going for 2020. So you got that to look forward to. Please don't forget to come back and see us. And don't forget, we will see you on the other side.